So, um, do you have any new material for today? Um, because I I looked at the second email you sent me that had the three attachments. Yeah. These three. Mm -hmm. So I still have those if you want to go over some of these. But if, All right. if you have something new that you'd rather go over, we can do that. Um, yeah, I'm sending one to you now. Okay. Um, so that'll just get there real quick. But... So I just sent it. All right. Not quite instantaneous. Close, but it'll take a minute sometimes. There it is. Didn't even take quite a quite a minute. So today we just started working on reflections and all that other kind of stuff. So you must that's have. mostly just uh going over translations and reflections and rotations and stuff. Okay. Did you take this picture differently than you did the other ones? Did you? It looks like maybe you didn't uh, put it as an attachment. Because um, notice yeah, how it shows here. Oh, yeah. It shows zoomed in really big. Um. Can you, do you remember whether you did it differently this time than you did last time? Um, I don't think I did. So you must be on chapter four. Yeah, no. Huh. So you're not on congruent triangles yet. No. Hmm. Okay. Must not be going exactly according to the book. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to look at this thing. Um, I just sent a new one. It's still sending, but... Okay. Let's see if it comes through as an attachment, which would be better. And also, I noticed that this looks like it's part of a previous... Yeah, I think I just hit reply. The one I just sent is in a brand new email, so. Okay, and that probably will matter, yeah. I would think. Yeah, see, this one allows me to download it onto my computer, and then I can bring it up. And then right. I adjust the size of it. All right. Awesome. Okay, number A, what are going to be the points of A prime, B prime, and C prime? Here, hold on a moment, let me pull up something that I can write with. All right. In other words, if you can give me A prime, B prime, and C prime, that's the same as drawing the graph, basically. Yeah. So if A is 0, 2, and we're reflecting it over the x-axis, what is A prime? Reflected over the x? Uh-huh. In other words, that first one says reflected over the x-axis. And what we're going to so do is we're just going to take every point and reflect it. And whatever... Right. In other words, if I connect those three points, it looks like it would be a triangle. And okay. to reflect it over the x-axis, just reflect all three points. All right. So 
A prime would be what? Would that be uh, zero, negative two? Yeah, B prime. If B is one comma negative three. Um, that'd be one, three. Uh-huh. And finally, C prime. C would be two, negative four. Yeah. In other words, the only thing you change is the Y coordinate. The X yeah. coordinate does not change when you reflect something over the X axis. So if I plot these three new points and connect them, it will make a triangle. And that triangle will be the original triangle reflected over the x-axis. All right. Okay. Yeah. But you can yeah. – I, I, I think the best way to do this is uh, point by point. So let's look at B reflecting over the y-axis. What's A prime going to be? Um – over the y-axis? Uh -huh. For B, that would be negative 1, negative 3. For A. Oh, okay. So for A prime. So that'd be 2, negative 4, right? Yeah, it's the opposite of the other. In other words, okay. we're changing the x-coordinate sign, not the y. So what's this one? The B part? Negative 6, 2. And the C part? Negative 3, negative 5. Okay. Now let's look at the harder one here. Here we're reflecting it not over the y-axis, but over the line y equals 1. Well, let's draw some of these points just so we can see what's going on here. Uh, here, let me. So if I put 6, 5 right there, that's point A. All right. B would be 3, 8. That's a good approximation for B. Yeah. And C would be minus 2, comma, plus 1, which is right there. Now, in this case, the line y equals 1 is very similar to the x-axis. Notice that the x-axis is y equals 0. Okay. So let me go ahead and draw the dotted line, y equals 1. And now let's take each point and reflect it over that line. Let's start with A. Where does A prime end up? Uh, negative 5, 5. Does the X coordinate change? No. So A prime is 6 for the X coordinate. Oh, 6, negative 5. Or uh, 6, negative 4, sorry. Okay. When I reflect that point about that line, it has to be the same distance from that point as this one is. What's the distance okay. of the y coordinate relative to the line y equal 1? In other words, what's four the units. distance? That's 4, right? Yeah. So I have to end up 4 units on the other side of that line. So what's okay. my y coordinate going to be? Um... In other words, what's four units measured this way? Four. From y equal one. Negative three. You got it. Okay. And I guess, yeah, the way you can do this is you want these two numbers added together, divided by 2, to equal that line. Okay. That's an algebraic way of doing it. But it's, it's 
helpful when you're doing something like revolving, reflecting about the line y equal 1, it's really helpful to draw a picture. Let's look at b. Where is b prime going to end up? b is going to be... b prime. Um, Where's the reflected? A seven. Uh, it's going to be 3, negative 5. Almost. Remember that the two y-coordinates added together, divided by 2, have to equal 1. So, so it's not negative 5. Okay. Added together, divided by well, 2 equals 1. Yeah, but that's kind of a vast or a backwards way of doing it. Um, let's do it the same way we did it. How far is 8 away from the line y equal 1? 7 units. So i got to keep going 7 units on the other side of that line. Where does that put me? Um, so, 0, negative 6. Yeah. Now notice that if I add negative 6 to 8, okay. I get plus 2. Divide that by 2, and I get 1. Okay. So that's what I'm saying is the check to see whether you've done it correctly. Is add right. that number to that number, divide by 2, and you need to be on the line of reflection. Okay. Okay. So how about yeah. C prime? C would be uh, 1. C prime. Hmm. Negative two. Good. Zero. Zero. One. In other one. words, it's on the line y equal one. So yeah. There's no reflecting. In other words, when you okay. reflect about that line, you stay there. So C prime is also negative two comma one. And okay. notice what happens if, if I draw the triangle, in other words, if I connect my three points to make triangle ABC, erase some of this other stuff here, and I were to reflect this triangle about the line y equal 1, this point would stay on it, right? Yeah. It wouldn't change. A would go to A prime. And B, we go to B prime, giving you the new triangle, which appears to be and is a reflection of the original triangle about the line Y equal 1. Okay. Okay. And all of these kind of are like that. You're just going to take it point by point. Um, First one says, graph the image after reflecting about the line y equal negative x. This one wants you to reflect it about the line y equal x. Okay. Let's do the easier one first. Let's do b, and then we'll go back and do a. Okay. What they're saying is... That line, y equal x, is this line right here. So I'm not reflecting over the x-axis or the y-axis, but I'm reflecting over this line. Okay, that makes sense. And let's take the point R, which is looks to be at about minus 3 plus 4. So this okay. point right there. R minus 3 comma 4. 
Now, where does R prime end up? R prime should end up right about there, right? Yeah. What are the coordinates of that point? Um, negative three, four. That'd be. That'd be three comma negative four. In other okay. words, when you reflect over the line y equal x, is all you do is change the sign on each coordinate. Okay. Let me think about that for one second. Yeah. In other words, if I had a point that was right there at 0, 2, and I reflect it, it would reflect to 2, comma 0, um, which is just changing the coordinates, not the sign. So I got this wrong. In other words, this is 4, comma, minus 3. All right. So when you reflect over the line y equal x, you merely change the coordinates. And that makes sense if if you know. Have you studied inverses yet? Uh, very little. Well, an inverse function is where you reflect it over the line y equal x. That's kind of the definition of an inverse function. And the one thing okay. about inverse functions is the the x coordinate becomes the y coordinate, and the y coordinate becomes the x coordinate. And that's exactly right. what we did here is all we did was we switched the two coordinates. And first I couldn't remember whether you switched the signs on the coordinates, both of them, which is what I did the first time I did it. Um, but it's, uh, that's not the way. In other words, the way I figured it out was by to figure out how to do that one. Okay, well, okay. if I'm going to reflect that point about that line, it's going to end up right there. And as all I did was switch the coordinates. I went from 0, 2 to 2, 0. All right. And so that's the way you reflect about the line y equal x. So let me erase this stuff that we don't need. And is all we're going to do here is come up with an R prime, S prime, P prime, and Q prime. This is the way they do okay. it in the class, right? Yeah. And in other words, you don't really have to figure out how to reflect that uh, polygon spatially. Because all you have to do is know how to reflect points. So whatever the coordinate is on S, the XY coordinate, it needs mm -hmm. to switch. And okay. Let's see if I've got that right. Let, let's see. That S coordinate is what? It's 4, 2. Two. two. Yeah. So if Six, I go 4, yeah. 2, that's about right there. And... I'm saying that the new point has to be 2, 4. And that looks right. In other words, when you're done, you should be able to draw a perpendicular line between those points. Okay. <clears throat> and that's a good way to kind of eyeball it. To make sure you're doing it right. Um, so... Notice what happens to P. No, no, no. P does move. P goes from there to there. And right. Q moves also. Q is going to go to the other side of here. Um, but the only thing you really need to know on how to do this one is switch the coordinates. Okay? Okay. Now let's yeah. look at the harder one. The y equal minus x. And this is going to be kind of similar. Um, we're going to, I never remember exactly. But is the line just going down from 
right to left? Yeah. I mean left to right. So here's the line y equal minus x. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I had a point there, it's got to end up here. Yeah. Well, what would happen? How do I get that? That point is 0, 2. This point is minus 2, 0. So I need to do what with each point? Flip the coordinates and make one negative? Yeah, not just one, but um, the x coordinate. Okay, yeah. Think. Let's let's try one. See if it works. Remember, when we're done, this thing needs to be perpendicular to that. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. So let's see. Let's take the point um, Q. Q is at. 4, 6. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's 6. We'll call that 4, 6. And that is point Q. So we know that our answer has to be somewhere there. Maybe, maybe right about there. Is it negative 6, 4? Q prime. Clearly, uh -huh. both have to be negative. Okay. So when you reflect over the line y equal negative x, you switch the coordinates and you switch both signs. Oh, yeah. Notice why it didn't show up on my first one. When I moved that point, 0, 2, to here, I couldn't tell that I was switching the sign on the 0, but I was. It actually goes to negative 2, negative 0, but negative 0 is the same as 0. So, in other words, I didn't discover it when I used a point that had a 0 for one of the coordinates. But right. once I used the point from your problem, and I could tell, well, that those are both positive coordinates, and I can tell that when I'm in this third quadrant over here, they have to both be negative. So I have to switch sides and signs. Okay. And... Is use that rule, and you'll end up with a Q prime, P prime, S prime, and R prime, and they'll be okay. in, and they'll be in the right spot. And if you were to connect your Q prime, P prime, S prime, and R prime, you would see that that polygon had been reflected about that line. In other words, right. I think you would. You you should be able to see it. It's a little hard to see sometimes, but. All right. All right. The glide reflection, pretty easy. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Well... First of all, if I do a straight translation, what, is, okay. what does J become? J becomes uh, 4, 0. Okay. And so you know to just subtract 6 from whatever the Y coordinate is. Okay. So after the glide reflection... I assume what they're meaning is you do the glide and then the reflection. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, after we did the glide, and we're reflecting about the line x equal minus 2, which is this line. That's a vertical line now. When you reflect over a vertical line, it's similar to reflecting over the y-axis. So let's put j, which is 4, 6. Let's put j glided, which is 4, 0. In other words, I glide down. And I'll call that okay. j prime, and that's 4, 0. And now if I want to reflect j prime across this line, how do I do that? In other words, I need to end up somewhere over here that's equidistant from that line. Is it j equals negative 6, 0? j prime? Close. How far away is j is the x-coordinate of j prime, or j for that matter, from the line x equal minus 2? Uh, six units. So how much further do I have to go? Another six units in that. What's six units to the left of minus 2? Minus 8. Okay. So my final point is minus 8 comma 0, and that okay. represents the glide reflection. And notice this time I'm going to add minus 8 to 4 and divide by 2, and I come up with minus 2. So okay. always remember that, that after you've reflected it, it has to be equidistant from the line and algebraically uh, that means adding the two coordinates, dividing by two, and you'll come up with a number that equals whatever this line is. Just like last time we came up with one, well, this time we come up with minus two. Now, right. notice that it did not matter if we did the translation first or last. In other words, if I start with my original point and I reflect it first, I get to there, and then if I translate it down 6, I get to there. So when oh, yeah. you're doing these glide reflections, you can do them in either order. I think it probably makes sense to always do them in the same order, but just take all three of your points, J, K, and C, and do both processes. And when you're done, make sure that your new point is a reflection about that dotted line, x equal minus 2, and it's 6 down from the original y. Okay. And that's all you have to do on 12. Uh, unfortunately, I am going to have to go, um, just because I have another session, um, let's just talk about lines of symmetry. How many lines of symmetry does this star have? Six. Yeah. In other words, I can draw a line through each point. Ooh, are there six? There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. But that fourth one is the same as my other one. Um, it does seem like there should be six, though. And, yeah, in other words, if I draw six lines from point to point, mm -hmm. both sides are symmetrical, and that's yeah. how you determine it. Notice the same thing can't be said for B. If I draw a line from there to there, it is not symmetrical about that line. If mm -hmm. I draw a line from here through here, it is. Yeah. So that would be 1, and then that would be 2, that would be 3. This one must end up with 5, but you have to draw from point to the vertex of the thing below it. Okay. All right, Mark, I will let you go. And uh, let's see, are, are we going to keep...
a regular schedule? Yeah. Could we try uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays? Which is what we did this week. Does, does Tuesday at 4.30 work for you? Yeah, Tuesday at 4.30 works. We'll just keep it the same as we've got now then. In other words, Tuesdays at 4.30, Thursdays at 4. Okay, yeah. All right? I'll talk yep, to you next Tuesday. Good. Talk to you next Tuesday, okay? All right. Thank you, David. You're welcome.